Good morning, friends. I'm Leona Evans, minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, an inclusive spiritual community affirming the good in all life. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream celebration. It is wonderful to have you here, and I'm delighted to be here myself. We're going to have a great morning together. We're going to discover new insights about the fullness and wholeness of the living spirit of truth. We're going to come to terms with how we integrate that principle into our everyday life. We're going to feel stronger, more alive, more determined to do what we can to be the peace that we wish to see in the world. Sound like a tall order? I don't think so. I think we're up to it. I know I'm up to it, and I'll talk more about that with you in the coming moments. But right now, before we begin our service, let's collect our thoughts. Let us become centered in this moment. Let us relax into this time and place. You know, so many times we think that we can appear to be focused and here in the now moment, but really we've got maybe a shopping list going on in the back of our mind, or we've just remembered there was somebody that we forgot to text back. But the fact is, spirit is fully present within us when we are fully present when we are here in this now moment, because it's in this moment that we get to make all kinds of changes, that we get to decide to let go of the past and all of the pain that certain incidences have brought us. We can decide to change everything about the way we've approached certain ideas that end up frustrating us and leave us in the same place that we started. No, this now moment is the place. It's the place to be. And when we are here fully present and when we are relaxed, miracles take place. And let's remember what our definition of a miracle is. A miracle, according to the Course in Miracles, is a change in perception. And if we are going to change the way we see things, broaden our outlook, have a more beautiful and loving perspective on things, then we're going to have to make that change by being here and now. So, let us affirm together, I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. Once again, I am now open and receptive to the living spirit of truth. Let's take a moment now to listen to Matthew J. Evans do our opening joy song. Good morning. Today we're going to be singing Thank You. Please sing along with the lyrics on the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your peace that fills us so sweetly and comforts and soothes us and holds us so gently in loving caresses embracing the universe making your children as one. Oh, how we thank you that your peace is growing within us and bringing us home, God, to you. Thank you for your light that keeps us in brightness and flows from within us, dispelling all darkness in streams of profusion encircling the universe making your children as one oh how we thank you that your light is growing within us and bringing us home god to you thank you 
for your love that binds us together and lifts us and heals us and goes on forever in spirals unending uniting the universe making your children as one oh how we thank you that your love is growing within us and bringing us home god to you oh how we thank you that your love is growing within us and bringing us home god to you have a great morning everyone thanks so much thank you so much matthew that was just terrific Friends, before we go on with our service, I would like to ask for your prayer support. As you know, I'm sure President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have tested positive for COVID. President Trump is in the hospital. And because we know that God is love and God is present and active within all life, I would ask that you join me in praying with and for President Trump, Melania, and all individuals who have been affected by COVID-19. This is a very stressful time, a very, very difficult time, a, a, a time of great pressure being put upon all of us to come up higher, to make wiser, more benevolent choices than we've ever made before. And so regardless of your political views, regardless of what you might think of President Trump's personality, we know that both he and Melania, everyone in the White House, all people of all political parties are expressions of spirit, worthy and wonderful. It doesn't matter right now what we agree and disagree on. There's only one reality, and that is God is love. God is life, and God is the life that is supporting all people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. God is the love that sees through personalities, what we approve of or disapprove of. None of that really matters right now. The only thing that matters is love, the love of spirit, the love of God that moves in and through us, that opens the door past what we agree or disagree with and brings us to a place where we know that we can come together in unity and in love to affirm divine life, healing, and wholeness, divine order, divine love, present and active. And so we give thanks that we continue to pray for all those affected by COVID-19, all of the individuals who have found themselves catching the virus. And it really doesn't matter why anymore. We can save our lectures and our righteous indignation for another time. Now is the time for love. And we need it now more than ever. Here's a great tune from Burt Beckerack and Helen David. One, two. Thing that just to love what the world needs. 
Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. We are the ones that need it, and ironically, we are the ones that can share it. The truth is, God is love, spirit, omnipresent spirit, the creative source of all there is, is pure and unconditional love. God is not a person who loves us one day and maybe is a little cool on the next day. God is the principle of unchanging, eternal, unconditional love. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter where we are, no matter what our age, God is love and God is present within all of us. So I called my lesson today, The Power of Boundaries. And I had an, a, an interesting experience. Actually, it was fascinating because it happened inside of me and it was not necessarily a conscious decision, but a change that took place inside of me, a type of transformation that I didn't expect because many transformations are just like that. We can't pick a time and place when we decide, okay, I'm going to change, and when I open my eyes after meditation, everything will be different. We would love that. I would love that. But the fact is, let's be grateful when it comes and how it comes and why it comes. Maybe we don't know all the answers, but I can tell you I had um, an amazing experience this week now, I don't have to tell you what a difficult year we've been having. I don't have to tell you how stressful things are. I don't have to tell you that every day when we turn on the television set or pick up a newspaper that something else that seems bizarre and out of the ordinary and frankly unnecessary has taken place more anger, more contentiousness, more prejudice, more separation, more polarization, more COVID-19. When is it enough? And so I have found, perhaps not unlike yourselves, that my stress level was reaching its optimum. Um, I mentioned last week the type of insomnia that happens when you just don't know how you're going to get out of this, how you're going to move forward when the odds don't appear to be in our favor. How do we keep on keeping on and focus on our principles when everything around us says, you know what, don't bother. It's not going to work out anyway. Okay. You might say, oh, Leona, how can you say something like that? That's blasphemous. You're a minister. You're always supposed to keep the faith. You're always supposed to be on top of things. And wouldn't I love it if that were true? Wouldn't I just love it 
If I could say that no matter what occurred in my life, I was always on top of it and could think of the perfect principle or a wonderful affirmation that could just take all of those symptoms and all of those problems away and I could just peacefully focus on the truth and the Lord of my being. That would be great. However, since we are spiritual beings learning to have a human experience, our goal is not to rise above life. Our goal is to embrace life, get into life, accept it, experience it, deal with it, grapple with it, find ways to handle it, figure out what to do with it, which parts of it to accept as our own and which parts to gently release because they no longer serve our highest spiritual purpose. Well, as I said, I had an experience this week that helped me understand more about all of this, more about boundaries, more about transformations in consciousness. And it happened as a result of the presidential debate this past week. Well, I turned on the TV with a type of nervous tension, hoping that everything would go well, hoping that something terrible wouldn't happen, hoping that they could be civil with one another and that the candidates would be able to debate the issues without getting personal. So that didn't happen because a few moments into the debate, the candidates started to interrupt. And I began to feel agitated because, not only because they were raising their voices, but because I couldn't really hear what was going on. People just talking on top of one another. And, you know, between Chris Wallace, the debate moderator, and the two candidates, who were all talking at the same time, I just began to get really, really tense. Now, apparently this is when a number of people turned off their TVs, but I wasn't thinking of that. I had to see it through and I had to affirm divine order. Well, the next thing that happened as the debate became more contentious and there were more interruptions and accusations and, and personal rhetoric, I started flashing back to my childhood as though I were listening to my parents argue and yell at one another in the, in the other room. And I would feel terribly agitated as though my future were uncertain and, and I didn't know what to do to make them stop. Finally, after 90 minutes of continued contentiousness and continued polarization and continued anguish coming from me and I'm assuming most others as well. The debate came to an end and something came over me, a realization, shall we say, an understanding that I was never going to give that much power to people expressing their anger. I was never going to be victimized by their yelling and screaming and threats. I was never going to be overcome with a sense of powerlessness and a feeling of hopelessness never ever again. So I wondered where that came from. And I knew I had to give that idea time and attention. But after the debate, of course, we had to listen to the commentaries and try to figure out exactly what went, what went on and, and, and try to make sense of it and try to analyze it and give opinions about it. But the fact was, that that realization I had was there. It stayed there throughout the commentaries. And when Matthew and I had both had enough 
grief and pain and sheer tragedy in our environment. We decided it was time to bed and Matthew went off to his room and I started giving some attention to the realization I had to this type of calmness that I had in spite of all of the activity that had gone on before. That was still there. But this calmness, this poise was at the center of my being. And I sat with it and I thought about it and I understood that my nervous system had come to a crossroads. I was no longer able to sit there day in and day out and try to analyze and figure out who was saying what and why and what it meant and what we could do about it and how we could um, take action in the midst of all of this pain. Taking action was fine. But the desperation and the lack of sleep and the agitation inside of me, um, changes in appetite, not really knowing how to get comfortable, not knowing how to relax, that needed to come to an end. There was no more room for it in my life. And so, Apparently, what happened was that during the debate, I came to a breaking point and the divine I am within me said, I am rising to the occasion and I am here in the midst of you and I am lifting you from the burden of taking it all on yourself. I am your higher self, and I am encouraging you to make the higher choice. Come up higher. Find the blessings in all of this that enable you to see your life and your work from a different perspective. But not from that one anymore, because you might not live through it. There's only so much stress we can take, and as sensitive as I am to the suffering in the world, this was obviously way too much to continue to try to handle. And so my divine, angelic, higher self blessed me. And as I was focusing and fully present on what was going on in the debate. There was nothing to block me from accepting guidance. It just happened. And so I realized that I had been released and freed and blessed from a fight that I could never win nor did I even want to. I just wanted everything to stop and I wanted to be part of making it stop and I couldn't and, and all of that that I'm sure you are very well acquainted with was just messing with my mind, with my heart, with my nervous system and with my hope for the future. And I began to realize what exactly was going to change. Now, if I didn't have to spend all that time and energy worrying about what was going to happen to our world and how I could be part of a change and why more people weren't willing to listen to my lessons on nonviolent communication and, and all of that frustration, if I didn't have to spend time doing that every day. What would I write? What would I say? What would I speak? What type of platform would I seek to share these ideas of nonviolent communication with the world? I would be on fire if I weren't exhausted. I would be on fire, but the right kind of fire 
not the kind that is so zealous that it burns up one's own household. All of that energy that I have spent that has only served to debilitate me and hasn't done one thing in terms of accomplishing my goals, I've drawn a boundary on how I'm going to react to those situations. Am I sad? Does my heart go out to the plight of people suffering from discrimination and racism and bias and all of the things that make life so challenging? Yes, of course. Of course, I want to do everything I can to help the cause. But I can't help it, I realize now by getting so involved in it that it brings me down with it. I'm unwilling to do that. I see that it's not necessary. I don't even have to try to give it up. It's not like smoking cigarettes where, you know, for weeks I thought I was going to go out of my mind trying to quit. No, this isn't like that. This is something that I feel has already happened. I've drawn my boundaries with the help of the divine I am. I've had a transformative experience. And I'm going to be spending much more of my time and energy working toward things that will uplift us, transform us. I'm free. I'm bounded by my resolve. Those are boundaries that are part of the decision. But I'm much freer than I was when I didn't have those boundaries. And so let me share with you <clears throat> a part of scripture that speaks to this type of experience. And it's about Jacob. Uh, Jacob had a twin brother, Esau. They were the sons of Isaac. And Jacob got into trouble with his twin brother when he was a young man. Um, he decided that his brother was kind of a simpleton and really didn't deserve to have his father's birthright, even though he was the eldest by just a very few minutes. And so he used his mental gymnastics to play a trick on his father and his brother. And make his father, who really was very old and had failing eyesight, believe that he was Esau. And so he got his father's blessing. But when Esau found out, he was so angry that Jacob had to flee the country and went off to build his life in a very, very far community. And yet, after so many years, word got out that Esau was willing to reconcile with Jacob and they were to meet in a certain place to have their reunion. Well, Jacob found the place or he found an area that was close to the place where they were going to meet. And as he was preparing for bed, he began to get suspicious what if Esau is still angry and seeks revenge against me? What if this isn't a happy reunion? What if he's going to attack me? What will I do? What should I do? And so he went to sleep. And that particular night, there were several nights when he had dreams, but this particular night, he had a dream about an angel and the angel descended on a ladder and Jacob began to wrestle with him and they wrestled with one another just trying to conquer one another, trying to beat one another at their own game and doing all kinds of physical contortions with one another, trying to best the other. Hours passed, 
And just before dawn, Jacob said to the angel, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. And so the angel blessed Jacob. And he said, from now on, your name will be Israel, which means one who seeks for God. And Jacob and the angel let go of one another. The angel ascended. And Jacob knew what he had to do. He knew that he had to go forward and have a reunion with his brother and meet him in love. And that's what he did. That is exactly what he did. And so I relate to that experience. Why? Because I was holding on to that which I had to wrestle with and struggle with, and it was making me weaker and weaker. My whole attitude toward the situations today, what I was seeing, what I thought I could do about it, I just immersed myself into those situations from a perspective of helplessness hopelessness, and I was trying so hard to make something happen without really feeling my power to do the, anything about it. And so, without my asking, I was able to realize that I too was holding on to this resistance and this anguish until I could be blessed by it, until I could understand what I was doing and how I could draw some boundaries and lift myself out of the level of the problem into the level of the solution. I feel richly blessed. I feel in much better shape to go out and meet my brother, my sister, all of my brothers and sisters who disagree or who have different points of view or choose to perhaps not treat me with respect or as well as I feel I would like to be treated. I'm no longer a victim and I give thanks, such grateful thanks and I share this with you because you never know when you're going to get a break. To be honest, you never know when something will seem to come upon you when actually it's been building up through our prayers and through our desires to, to come up higher. We never know when that's going to happen. And so I thank you for being part of this experience. I would love to hear you share with me sometimes when some incidence is in your life where you didn't let go of a situation until you were blessed but didn't realize it until afterward. I am delighted to be part of this virtual ministry and I would like us to share with one another our experiences. I know that not everybody who watches this is a member of Facebook. Not everybody can comment. But I bet that each of you does know someone who can help you with that. We want to grow this virtual ministry. We want people to be part of our unity family where we celebrate the presence of spirit, when we can go through our issues with one another, where we can transcend and move from the level of the problem to the level of the solution. We want to start that now. Our old way of doing ministry is fading away before our eyes, and this is a powerful new vision of how we can connect in rich and exciting ways. So please get in touch with us. 
I'm available on Leona Evans. I'm available on uh, websites and Facebook. And we have a podcast, Matthew and I, called Get Off Your Affirmation. Uh, Unity of Slow has a website. We are all over the place. And I want you to connect with me. I want you to be part of lifting one another, lifting ourselves together as a worldwide community of faith. Let's take a moment now in the quiet to celebrate our unity of spirit. Take a deep breath and relax. Once again, breathe deeply and gently exhale. Relax into the message, the message of freedom, the message of being open to guidance, the message of renewal, of being lifted from so many levels of stress, letting go of that which no longer works, and embracing the beauty of life, the beauty of love. becoming all you were created to be. The freedom to choose life. Relax into the newly discovered freedom that comes with making choices, drawing boundaries, staying focused on what it is that we want, and allowing ourselves to connect with every aspect of life of nature, the symphony of life, each of us unique and yet connected at the core of our being. Let's celebrate life. And so it is. Amen. And now let's take a moment to bless our offerings. Unity of San Luis Obispo is grateful for your tithes and offerings. We are an inclusive spiritual community. We bless all people everywhere and do all we can to support human rights in our community and in our world. And if you've received any blessing this morning from the message, from the music, perhaps a combination of both, please bless us with your tithes and gifts. We appreciate it and we bless you. Let's speak the words of our prosperity affirmation together. God is my source. I am God's channel. In love and wisdom, I share my gifts. This is a song by Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington. Take the A train.
Taking the A train. Mm. Once again, thank you, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. Terrific number. Wonderful number. Thank you for sharing your mighty talents and your gifts with us. And so I invite you once again to listen to our podcast called Get Off Your Affirmation. My son Matthew and I co-host it this week. Our episode is titled The Transformative Power of Resilience. And we're going to be offering tools and methods to help you find that ability within you, that ability to spring back in the face of adversity. Everyone has this ability. We just have to figure out how to cultivate it. So I invite you to listen to the podcast, Get Off Your Affirmation, wherever you get your podcasts. Let's sing our peace song now, shall we? of our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. God bless you and have a wonderful week. You deserve it.